Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part six of my PHP tutorial. Today, I'm going to focus a lot on directory traversal, but first, I'm going to answer a couple questions that were sent in to me. I had talked about in the previous tutorial about how somebody I had known had been receiving reports that they had been sending out immense amounts of spam. Well, here, in essence, is their comment form with some of the information missing. Basically, what the person was doing, just to jump right into it, as I'm doing right here, was going into their comment form, and no, I don't have an AOL account, right like that. What a lot of people don't know is if you don't protect this email area and it is sent to the mail function inside of PHP, you can add a blind copy to this and it's just this simple. Just put in a percent sign and you're going to see the evil of percent signs in this tutorial. Hold by an A, B, C, C, colon, and then as many emails as you want can be attached to this. This is a blind copy feature. So of course you would always want to make sure that any emails that are entered only have one at symbol and follow this and I've gone over the regular expression that goes along with that in previous tutorials. Another question that I received I can just delete this, was in regards to SQL injection. People were asking questions about the other different SQL queries available. Specifically, insert, update, and delete. I'm approaching this from a security standpoint, meaning you're securing from this. But just to show you exactly how dangerous this could be, let's say a malicious hacker decides to do this to you. You have this query available for someone to put in here using the update query, where user ID is equal to blah blah and pass blah 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 blah. You can remember this from the previous tutorial. If you didn't watch part five, definitely check it out. Otherwise, this makes no sense to you at all. Well, remember how we were in here and we were negating all this information previously? Well, imagine if somebody came in here and in the input area, they put boom or one, which is always going to come out as positive, followed by dash dash space and MySQL, and in the other one databases, it's going to be just dash dash. This is going to change every single user ID on the entire database to whatever this password is right here. So that shows you just how dangerous it can be if you allow people to access these different queries in MySQL. So there, showed you two very, very nasty things. Now I'm going to show you one of the nastiest things. Pretty much on a daily basis, my website, along with hundreds of thousands of other websites, gets hit with what you see right down here. Okay, this is kind of what we call a honeypot, which attracts hackers anyway, because it says PayPal, checkout, shopping cart. Yeah, it's very attractive. But you can see down here, I have option, which is where we're going to assign a value to this variable right here. They have all of this information in right here. This is what we call a directory traversal hack. And you can definitely tell that the person, at least to a certain extent, knows what they're doing here because they put a nullity in it. I'm going to show you exactly why you would use this and why all this is extremely powerful. I'm going to show you a ton and ton of examples. All right, so let's just start off real simple here. And let's say they have some PHP code or you have some PHP code. And this says if is set and no post does not protect you from having to worry about these things, by the way. And let's decide that you have a, a feature in your website that based off of the language that they enter in the URL, you're going to serve up different content. Just to show you exactly what's going on here, I'm going to print that out the screen, and then you go. And by the way, directory traversal, I have seen reports that say that over 70% of websites are subject to some form of directory traversal. All right. And then let's say that based off of the value of language, you are going to load a different header file. It's a JPEG of some sort or another. Okay? And you think, well, I'm going to just protect myself by putting the JPEG in there. That's going to guarantee that this is going to include a JPEG image, and it's going to print out this specific JPEG image to screen. Okay? Just like that. And then that's the end of your PHP code. I'll show you just how malicious this can get. File save it, bad stuff three. And let's say a hacker comes in here and puts in language equal to, and this is just a way that they can print out a file that you have stored inside of your current directory. And see, here's the evil null at the end. What this does is it nullifies that JPEG. It cancels it out. So that's the reason why it's put on there. And if we execute that, hello, you've been hacked. You can see that this is actually the file that I decided to shoot out to screen. It is not this hacked right here. And if we jump over and look, you can see that right here. PHP, hello, you've been hacked. So I was able to go in there and eliminate what you thought was a catch, forcing a JPEG image to be put on the screen. And instead, I executed to screen exactly 
what was stored inside of that file. So you think, well, that's not very dangerous, which it definitely is. And by the way, if you'd want to get rid of a hacker's ability to go in there and insert things into your include, include once and require once and require functions, in PHP INI, you are going to see this line right here. And if it's set to on, that means what I just showed you can be done to you. If it is set to off and your server is restarted, they cannot do that to you. All right, so you definitely want to go into PHP, INI, and change that to off. Well, let's say that you want to go in here and you decide that you want people to be able to get contents of files. Okay, we're just going to leave this exactly the same as we have right here. And we're going to say result is equal to file get contents. So this is a function you have available that is going to accept user input. Well, what I'm going to do here on screen, you just saw how I bypassed some of the security. And using this preg replace function, I'm actually at the same time going to show you how to eliminate PHP code or injection. There's a regular expression that's going to cancel out that ability to use that information. And in here, I'm going to type in result. File save, reload it. And you can see it went in there using the file get contents and put in exactly what I wanted it to put in there. To get even more dangerous, let's say you allow people to use a function on your computer called exec, which allows you to perform system commands. So let's get rid of this and type in exec, language, exec. And I see this capability all of the time in websites. What this is going to do is it's going to store the results of this command inside of this array. And for each, as you have seen before, cycles through those values that are stored in the array. And in this situation, I'm going to print them out to screen. And we'll file save that. And then this time, let's say that under language, the hacker decides to go in here and type in ls percent sign 20, which is the URL encoding for space dash L A and hit enter. You can see that they were easily able to print out and I'll zoom out because you can see this all of the information on all of the files that are currently stored in the current directory. And you might say, well, that's no big deal, even though they know a great deal of information about all the different files that are available to, for them to hack. For now, using that exact technique, I'm going to show you even more malicious information people will be able to get at. Because with the exec function, they're actually going to be able to access any file on your entire system that they would want to. And this gets back to that link that I showed you in the beginning of the tutorial that I see constantly from computer hackers. So here what we're going to do, without making any changes to this code that's right here, I'm going to come up here and zoom in. And at the end of language, this time, I'm going to type in cat which is a Unix command, percent sign, 2O, followed by dot dot, forward slash, dot dot, forward slash, dot dot, forward slash, dot dot, forward slash, etc, and I think you might know where I'm going with this. This will give them access to every single user ID on my whole entire system. And you can see right here that that is exactly what they did. Every single user ID on the entire web server is now available to them. And yes, you can also get access to the password files. So let's say you're saying to yourself, well, yeah, I see that you have that there, but I could just check for etc forward slash password, never let anything in there like that. Well, this is where encoding comes in. And also what a lot of people do is they block out the two periods and they block out forward slashes and won't allow those things to appear on the screen. Well, that's perfectly fine because all I need to do, again, if I have my percent sign, is come in here and type in percent to e just like that, followed by another percent to E, which represents the periods. And then if I want to get rid of this forward slash or instead encode it, percent to F, right like that. And I need three more of those guys. So I'm just going to copy this right like this, get rid of this and go one, two, three. And of course, all this stuff is automated by a computer whenever these attacks are going forward. And if you hit enter, you'll see that all that information came through again. So that's how URL encoding works. It helps protect so that you can't tell exactly what they're going for. But you're saying, oh no, I, I would get rid of the etc forward slash password. Okay, well, I can also get rid of that because all I need to do is also put in the character encoding for all of these letters. And all of these letters also have sneaky ways of changing things. So there you are. Nothing but character encoding across the entire thing. And hit enter. And you can see you got the same results. 
all of the information in regards to user IDs on my server. And this is my personal server. This, I'm not that stupid. This isn't new thing thing, my website. So there's how you would do character encoding to get access to the ETC password files. So basically, what do you do if you want to fight off hackers? What sort of security parameters should you put up to fight directory traversal? Don't provide access to functions that interact with the system. Number one, also using regular expressions, you want to get rid of these guys. Any forward slashes, backslashes, semicolons, which by the way, the encoding for a semicolon is percent %3b, get rid of dashes, get rid of the quotes, and the and symbol. You want to filter all those out from user input. You also, your web server should have one owner, which is going to be www in almost all cases. And this guy should not have ownership over any folder outside of the web server. And if you don't know, this is how you change owners of folders inside of Unix or on Macs because they're in essence Unix platforms. Also, you need to have your permission set to the maximum security level. If the user doesn't need to be able to read it, don't allow them to read it. If they don't need to write to it, don't allow them to do that. Don't allow them to execute if you don't want them to do that. And just to briefly go through exactly how this is set up, normally your files are going to be 755 if they're PHP files. And if you want to change a file to 755, you would just type in change mod 755 and the name of the file or the name of the folder. And where these numbers come from is the ability to read as a value that is equal to 4. The ability to write to a file is equal to a value of 2. And the ability to execute has a value of 1. So 7, 4 plus 2 plus 1. The owner of the file, the person that created it, is going to be equal to 7. And then everyone else is only going to have read and execute. 4 plus 1 equals 5. They are not going to be able to write to those files. So to finish this off, do not allow people access to eval, system, exec, file, git, contents, because this is what a computer hacker is looking through, pass through, include, or include once, require or require once, file, put, contents, and obviously f open and any other files that would access the system. So there is a whole bunch of mischievous things that are done through tr directory traversal. If you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comment section below. Up next, I'm going to go over cross-site scripting and how to prevent it and exactly the damage it can do. Till next time!